Hello and welcome to a webinar hosted by World Pipelines with Ms. Strath. I'm Elizabeth Corner, the Senior Editor of World Pipelines. Today's session is entitled Pigging the Unpiggable, Practical Approaches for Difficult to Inspect Pipelines. The presentation will be led by Mike Niosi, Divisional Vice President and Managing Director of OnStream Pipeline Inspection, a member of Mistras Group. And he'll be presenting alongside Jay Barlow, Mechanical Engineering Manager for OnStream Pipeline Inspection. Mike Niosi began his career in inline inspection more than 20 years ago, initially in data analysis. Mike has been with OnStream for almost three years and he has a passion for safety and for pipeline integrity. Given his roots in data analysis, Mike is a firm believer that the biggest gains to be made in the industry are in the field of data science, particularly in analysis software and algorithms. Jay Barlow has amassed over 20 years of design and development experience in the pipeline inspection industry and has been at OnStream for over five years. Jay began his career as a mechanical designer. His extensive experience in various engineering facets allows him, him to enhance on-stream solutions and improve its customers' operations. Jay is a strong believer that ILI tools should be designed from the outset to collect the best data under challenging pipeline conditions. Today's webinar will review case studies of inspection programs for lines that were thought to be unpickable. At the end of the presentation, Mike and Jay will join me for a Q&A session. If you'd like to submit a question for the Q&A, you can do so at any time during today's webinar or during the question and answer session itself. For those of you joining us on a mobile or cell phone, you can access the question box by tapping the icon at the bottom of your screen. If you're using a desktop or a laptop, Click the orange arrow on the right of your screen to open up the user interface and that will reveal the question box. If you happen to miss a part of the presentation or you'd like to watch again, don't worry, we will be sending a full recording of the webinar to everyone after today's session. So let's begin with today's presentation. Hello everyone, thanks for joining this webinar today. My name is Mike Niosi and I'm the Vice President and Managing Director for OnStream Pipeline Inspection. It's my privilege to be here today with Jay Barlow, my co-presenter. Hi, I'm the uh, Mechanical Design Manager for uh, OnStream Pipeline Inspection and I've been in the ILI industry designing pigs for over 20 years. And one of my most favorite parts of my job is designing tools and solutions for uh, challenging pipelines. Thanks, Jay. And that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about pigable, pigging the unpiggable, um, practical approaches for difficult to inspect pipelines. And when we use the word unpiggable, we mean we mean unpiggable in the conventional sense. So our agenda today, we're going to do a brief introduction um, on unpiggable pipelines and, and our philosophy and in, in how we approach approach unpiggable projects. We'll quickly go through a number of case studies, uh, common common scenarios that we come across in our business. So unpickable laterals in a natural gas transmission system, gas storage field inspection programs, multi-diameter inspections, storage terminal and facility piping inspection, HDDs, and then uh, a special application case, uh, a high temperature pipeline inspection. Our philosophy for approaching unpiggable pipelines is quite simple. Uh, we seek practical, cost-effective solutions which are priced fairly and, uh, and which never compromise safety. So some of the reasons that uh, pipelines are classified as unpiggable, which in reality is just difficult to pick, uh, there are no launcher, no receiver, no access sometimes. Um, low pressure, low flow, no flow, um, dual diameter, multi-diameter pipelines, um, strange fittings in the line, valves, bends, heavy wall thicknesses, et cetera. Uh, harsh environments, so those can include like high temperature, um, high pressure, um, strange 
uh, unusual chemicals or pipeline media. And uh, any combination of the above, you know, anything, uh, combinations of those make pipelines hard to inspect. Yeah, and so the areas where we most commonly um, see these challenges and, and work with our customers to solve them, uh, plants, terminals, other, other, other oil and gas facilities, transmission system laterals, crossings and HTDs, gas storage fields, and uh, as Jay mentioned, special application pipelines. So I'm going to jump right into the first uh, case study. This is a, a very typical um, gas transmission system, unpickable lateral case study. Uh, OnStream has been in the, in, in the tether business for, uh, for over 10 years now, and we do as many as a thousand of these projects a year. And, and this, is a, this is a very typical example. So in this particular example, this is a, a six inch line that runs from a, a metering station over here to a transmission line, you can just see you can just see the uh, the outline of it here in Google Earth. It's 4.83 kilometers long, which is about three miles. Um, the challenges that make it unpickable: it's the pipes buried. There's no launchers and receivers, and there's no above ground access uh, to this to this piece of pipe whatsoever. This is actually what we see if we go to uh, either end of the site. Not, nothing nothing is uh, is above ground. So our solution for for these cases, this is uh, is a look at our high resolution combination MFL geometry and IMU tool. This is a, a bi directional tool that can run in both directions. This is the wireline unit that we send these tools out with. Uh, this is equipped with uh, with with a tether with wireline and uh, and an air compressor to blow the tool out. So. Our solution for this particular line, rather than than uh, attempt to cut it at one end and and go all the way from one end to the other, be, as as it is getting up there in length for for tethered inspection, and rather than going from from each end and inspecting to the middle, we uh, we worked out a, a midline cut point, and um, this is what the bell hole looked like when we when we uh, exposed the pipe. I don't know how well you can see it, but one end of the pipe is is here. The other end is uh, is here. This is quite a large excavation. Um, they don't always necessarily need to be that big. Uh, in this case, at, you know, land access and, and everything else was was very easy. So what we did from the cut point, we blew the tool to the metering station 1.64 kilometers and pulled it back. And then we turned around and, and stuck the tool in the other end of the pipe and blew it out 3.19 kilometers and pulled it back. And at the end of the day, we produced uh, a final report that was merged or stitched together. That's uh, just like a high resolution conventional inline inspection and uh, that presents the data in all, all in one direction from, from launcher to receiver. And that one leads right into the next case study. This is, this is another typical application that we see. These are gas storage, a gas storage lateral case study. So this is a, a gas storage field. Um, I'm not sure how easy it is to see see the lines, but for this particular field, we've inspected 10 of the laterals now uh, for a total of 19.9 kilometers or, or 12.4 miles. The pipe segments range in diameter from six inch to 16, 16 inch. Uh, the challenge is again, there's no launchers and receivers on any of the segments. There are some risers, so there are some above ground access points, but uh, there are also some segments with no uh, above ground access whatsoever. This is, uh, we, and unfortunately, we didn't have a lot of great pictures or, or zoomed out pictures, but this is what uh, one of the above ground risers looks like. And so you can see this is quite convenient, lots of access for the truck. Um, with a flange broken open, you can see we're, we're sliding the tool into the riser off of the tray. So our, our solution, um, riser access wherever it's possible, bell hole access and, and cutting the pipe where it's not possible. Again, we're using our bi-directional high-res tethered MFL uh, geometry and IMU equipment. And again, we're providing complete high-res inline inspection reports for, for these assets. So if we look at this particular field um, and the inspections we've done, 
this this is a this is a, a, a really good one. Riser entries were were actually possible at eight out of the ten laterals, and uh, bell holes and cut points had to be had to be performed at two for two of the ten segments. And again, for each of the segments, we're able to provide uh, complete pipeline inspection reports. Um, and then there's multi diameter pipelines are often considered uh, un unbankable. Um, this one here will compare two different pipelines that are quite similar, but also have some uh, notable differences, which caused us to have two different approaches to solving the issues, solving, performing the inspection. Um, the first one is a 10 inch natural gas pipeline with a piece of eight inch pipe going across the river, underneath the river. So there's a small pipe in the middle and large pipe on either side. Um, there's a high consequence of the tool stoppage. Um, you know, it's a very difficult area to access or extract a tool if anything were to go wrong. And uh, the pipeline in that one though could be shut down. And on the other uh, scenario, there is an eight inch pipeline with a 12 inch section in the middle. So there's a large piece in the middle and small pieces on the outsides. This one's a liquid pipeline, so that's different. Uh, where it's similar, there's also a river crossing and a very high consequence of having issues with uh, tools under the river and whatnot. And on the second one, um, pipeline it, outage is not possible for more than maybe an hour or two at most. Um, so for the natural gas 10 in 10 by 8 by 10, um, we did two cut points, one on each river bank and bi-directional tethered to 10 inch from each side until it changed to eight inch and pulled back um, and developed a customized eight by 10 drive unit and then pulled through and inspected the eight inch piece under the river. For the other pipeline, um, because it had conventional launchers and receivers on the pipeline um, and the 12 inch section was above ground or not above ground, sorry, but on shore and uh, able, easily able to expose it. So direct assessment was chosen for that piece and we developed a drive module to pull the eight inch through and under the river and do the, that inspection in a, in a dual diameter way. Um, and this is showing the cut points on the riverbanks and putting the eight inch tool into a 10 inch pipe there with the, with the drive module on the far left picture and performing the inspection under the river and pulling it through in under the center there. Uh, for the eight inch pipeline, um, we first started in a simple approach first, uh, buying commercial multi-diameter drive elements. That shows a 12 inch uh, drive and then the 12 inch drive squeezed down to do the eight inch piece. And uh, we tried that and they work by themselves, but not pulling a high res MFL tool. We uh, made a flow loop, including all of the uh, pipeline features, all the major pipeline features, the different wall thicknesses, the bends, and of course the uh, reducer and 12 inch section in the middle. We performed flow testing to make sure that we had a you know, 100% reliable uh, transition of the tool. And that's the picture of the top of the first iteration. And then we worked to reduce the DP required. And that was the final iteration that we used on the bottom. Okay, thanks Jay. I'm gonna talk about uh, a couple of different um, facilities pipe, um, facilities unpickable pipe inspection case studies. So facilities are an area where we often get requests to see if uh, if we've got solutions to unpickable pipelines. So this first one, this is a six inch butane pipeline. It's uh, 790 feet long or 240 meters. This pipe is is right in a facility. It's uh, it's buried from end to end. There's no launcher and receiver. There is a, a single above ground access point, but it's it's vertical. And so there's this vertical piece of pipe with a flange and uh, the, the space in this facility is somewhat limited for the wireline truck. So our solution, 
Uh, again, we deployed the, the BiDi tethered combo with IMU tool. Um, we launched the tool vertically using a crane. Um, we used a, a shiv pulley assembly, which is attached to the crane. Uh, and you can see in this picture, which which uh, attaches to the wireline truck, so it can it can it can park at some distance away. You can also see the air hose here coming off of the truck that connects to the pack off assembly. And then we blew the tool out, pulled it back, and we're able to provide the customer a prelim report the next day, identifying areas of, of corrosion in this pipeline. This is another one, uh, another facilities piping case study. It, it does feel a little bit like cheating because we, we talked about pigging the unpiggable, uh, but this 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 solution set absolutely belongs in uh, in unpiggable pipeline discussions. This is the art crawler, the automated radiography testing unit. Uh, so it's an external pipe crawler, and in this in this case, it was deployed in uh, in a facility to inspect four inch and 10 inch process water piping. Uh, the, the piping sections were 750 feet long. Lots of challenges with this one. Uh, there was no launchers and receivers. The pipe is 20 plus feet in the air. It's up on racks. Uh, debris and deposits were likely unknown, but, but likely in the pipe. And the pipe is, is completely insulated. So the solution, uh, the Gen 5 art crawler, and um, we ran it on multiple passes. Uh, so we ran it at different angles around the pipe uh, to make sure we got 360 degree coverage. We used uh, rope access technicians for, for placement and uh, positioning the tool. And we're able to provide the customer with, with a complete metal loss uh, detection and sizing inspection. So this solution is non-intrusive, you know, required no outage, required no, because we used rope access, required no scaffolding. And, uh, and no insulation stripping required. The next, the next case study I'll talk about is uh, HDD inspections. And so uh, HDD, HDDs are another case where we're often called out to, uh, to do an inspection, use kind of conventional equipment in, in maybe an unconventional way or unconventional process. So this was uh, an HDD that was uh, 1,100 feet of pipe. It was a river crossing replacement for an existing pipeline. And what we do, we call this a pre-pull, post-pull inspection. So what we do is we, again, with our BiDi combo MFL and, and geometry tool, we inspect the pipe that's going to be bored before it's actually pulled underground. And so in this case, it was October 24th last year. We did the pre-pull inspection. Um, before the pipe was bored and, and we provided a complete final report uh, first thing the next morning. And the purpose of doing this is really to assess the pipe and see, triple check and see if there's any, anything, you know, irregular, any potential mill defects, anything that the tool will pick up. It's much easier to deal with, with it, you know, when the pipe is still on stands uh, rather than once it's bored under the river. So in this case, the pipe got the all clear, uh, it was bored, um, and the post pull inspection, so the inspection of the line after it's been bored was performed on October 29th. Again, we used a bi-directional combo tool. This time we ran the IMU. There's no, there's no sense in running the IMU when the pipe is still up on, on stands pre-pull. This time we ran the IMU, we performed a detail analysis in comparison to the pre-pull data just to make sure absolutely nothing had changed. And we provided that report to the customer the next day. Again, <clears throat> the purpose of the post poll now is to just assess and, and determine if any anomalies or damage have appeared since the pipe was bored um, in comparison to, uh, to the pre-bore. So project, project result, uh, again, the pipe is cleared before it's bored. Uh, the pipe is checked again immediately post post bore. Now there's a there's a fingerprint of this HDD. So if anything, you know, when the first um, in you know in service inspection happens, maybe five years later or seven years later, whatever the case may be, um, if anything appears, you know, there'll be a data set to go back to and, and compare and, and determine 
was this something that was always there or is this is this in fact new damage that's happening and the other the other uh, benefit that the customer gets running the IMU in the post poll is they get a complete elevation profile of a confirmation of the elevation profile of the pipe and then there's the other end of the spectrum where that one used uh, existing technology and provided uh, good data of this sometimes there's just nothing but to uh, no way around it but to develop a whole new technology uh, this pipeline is a uh, 15 kilometer high temperature bitumen pipeline it's buried uh, and has launched and received facilities and it is an intermittent service and it pumps 150 degrees celsius or 300 fahrenheit bitumen when it's in service and then it goes out of service so the pipeline cools down and heats up um, so the pipeline potentially grows and shrinks by up to 30 meters, 98 feet with the heat cycles going from ambient up to temperature. And that amount of length of pipe has to go somewhere. Uh, some portion that's are above ground and there's expansion routes, but there's very little at each end. And, but the underground, there's strain and wrinkles can be formed while the line's at temperature. And those that pipeline strain and wrinkles with um, disappear when the pipeline cooled down. So there's no choice but to do a high resolution caliper inspection and IMU inspection and it has to be done at the pipeline temperature. So this one required a custom built high temperature, um, high res IMU and geometry tool from the ground up basically. So it's a long process to do something like this. Uh, and this was one of the final um, tests uh, where we in, put the tool when it's running live into that chamber and fill the chamber with 150 degrees C um, oil and make sure that the temperature that all of the electronic components and everything operates throughout um, you know the whole life of the basically we ran the batteries dead on this case or until it overheated actually almost um, and it got almost 24 hours. And with the tool that we then went out and did a baseline inspection with the IMU at normal temperatures of the pipeline and um, you know confirmed the pipeline position and whatnot and then the pipeline was into hot service and we completed uh, high temperature inspections and detected you know, pipeline movement and whatnot. So this was a very successful project that we've just completed. Thanks, Jay. So in summary, uh, pipelines can be deemed unpickable in the conventional sense for a variety of reasons. It can be access, flow conditions, pipeline features, temperature, uh, products, et cetera. Right, again, our philosophy to unpickable pipeline projects is very simple. We look for practical, cost-effective solutions, which we price fairly, and we never compromise safety. Um, there's a wide variety of techniques and solutions possible. You know, we can often use unconventional application of existing technologies, as you saw in some of the case studies today. We can use different combinations of technology solutions, and uh, you know, in in the extreme cases where where there's really nothing out there. Um, OnStream is, is also game to develop new technologies altogether. We look forward to hearing about your challenges and to working with you to find solutions. Um, one note, I've noticed that uh, when we work together with the customer to work towards solutions, um, instead of assuming other people's uh, constraints, we can often make the unpickable pickable. Awesome, great point. Thanks, Jay, and thank you everyone for joining this webinar. Thank you so much, Mike and Jay, for that presentation on expecting unpickable pipelines and for a great range of case studies, which were very beautifully described. It is now time to move on to our Q&A session. As mentioned before, uh, I'm Elizabeth Corner, Senior Editor of Wild Pipelines, and Mike and Jay are ready to answer your questions. So hi, Mike. Hi, Jay. Good morning, everyone. Good morning or afternoon. 
Thank you so much for being here to participate in the Q&A session. So we have some questions in already, but there is still time to send in more. We will get through as many as we can today. Any that we don't get around to will be passed to the Mistress team for follow-up at a later date. Quickly to recap, if you're joining us on a mobile or cell phone, you can access the question box by tapping the icon at the bottom of your screen. And if you're on a desktop or a laptop, click the orange arrow and that will open up the question box. So let's get straight into it, shall we? Let's get on with our first question. So my first question for you is, what sizes of bi-directional combo tools are available? Um, I, uh, from a three inch to an 18 inch is what we have currently. Um, we just developed a 16 and 18 inch tools and they're fully triaxial and we just did our four first uh, four segment inspection with the 16 going out next week for the 18 and uh, for single direction pulls we can pull tools like 20 inch 22 all the way up to 30 inch so far of course that's always expanding in a single direction pull those ones are so basically up to 18 bi-directional and 20 plus in single direction. Fantastic, thank you. I've got a question here from Wesley Sullivan from Sitgo who asks, what is the maximum external insulation that can be inspected and the maximum pipe diameter? So I, thanks for that question, Wesley. Um, I'm, I'm assuming that's a question for the art crawler technology. And um, I, I, I will follow up with you directly, Wesley, after uh, after the webinar. But um, the maximum diameter that can be inspected with the art crawler is, is a function of the density of the fluid that's in the line, if there's fluid in the line, and the wall thickness of the steel. I, the, the part I'm not sure about is uh, is the standoff in, in insulation. But I do know the art crawler successfully inspected liquid filled lines heavy 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 crude lines uh up to 28 inch in diameter de depending on the wall thickness so so it's a bit of a, a a combination of things but um it's not my core the art crawler is not my core area of expertise but uh I, I will follow up with you after the webinar fantastic yeah we will get back to you on that one wesley so I have um, Andy Studman from Shell, who has given us a couple of things. He's got a comment, a share, and a question. So just allow me to, to give those to you. So the comment is, I fully concur on the difficult to pig rather than unpiggable. I find the term unpiggable helpful. I think as many of us do, uh, as it can create early perceptions that result in overlooking potential options and solutions. Um, he'd also like to share that Shell UK has successfully performed ILI in gas at 0.05 meters per second, including traversing a swing check valve tethered ILI through 1020 degrees of bends, um, a subsea launch and receive to ILI, an operational, oh gosh, this is this is long, an operational pigging in a 16 and 24 and 34 inch system. And the key to all of that was upfront sufficiently um, trialing and perseverance. Now we get to his question. Has a difficult to pig experience resulted in deselecting ILI? And if yes, what was the final solution? Ooh. Yeah. Um, that was one. Uh, the art crawler is kind of deselecting ILI, um, where you don't actually put your tool inside the pipeline. It's not an inline inspection, it's a uh, inspect from the outside. There's uh, one example um there, yeah there's many ways you know we, we've we've been in situations in facilities pipe for for example where you know we we show up with our uh bi-directional combo tools and and uh we can get a portion you know maybe a significant portion of the pipe but there's still areas you know left uninspected and and in those cases sometimes it's a combination of inspection techniques sometimes it's a, a combination of you know a by mfl and then maybe some guided wave and or you know exposing smaller sections of pipe and uh and inspecting directly fantastic thank you i've got a question here from jason scott from enbridge who asks how much did the high temp tool weigh um I believe it weighed 
seven hundred pounds, maybe something. I'm like, no. I would have to get back to you. It wasn't yeah. that much. Um, maybe four or five hundred pounds, actually. The more I think about it. Okay. Well, we can definitely confirm that one to you, Jason. Yeah. Um, I've got a question on the art crawler here. So, can the art crawler actually size corrosion, not just detect it? Do liquid lines have to be emptied for it to work? Yeah, the art crawler it, it does provide uh, sizing of corrosion. Um, it detects corrosion. It sizes corrosion. Uh, it, additionally, it can detect. You know, in cases where the pipe is insulated, it can detect moisture in the insulation which is often uh, a precursor to corrosion. And um, as I mentioned earlier, liquid lines do not necessarily need to be emptied in order to use the technolo technology. And, and that inspection capability is really a function of the density of the liquid and, uh, and the thick thickness of the steel. Fantastic. Next up is Oak Clement from Tolden or Gas Invest. Um, and they are asking, can pipe and pipe be inspected with any of your tools? Pipe and pipe. Um, I think the best way to do it, you like, is that like a casing we're talking about um, type of thing? I think the best might be a dual approach, inline inspected. I mean, this is a good one where um, the collaboration back and forth would uh, lead to the the solution the cooperation back and forth um yeah. initially i'd say inspect the inside with one technology inspect the outside with another technology um if the you know pipe or if they're actually in contact we probably could do it all just in line depending but this is a good one where collaboration is the key and it would sure. require discussion yeah and 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 it's also the type of thing that uh, you know our, our, our core technique for inspecting for metal loss, for for instance, is uh, is MFL. It is magnetic. So if you have one one pipe inside a carrier pipe, that 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 does affect you know the, the magnetic performance of the technology. But uh, depending on the wall thicknesses involved and, and how the pipe is the the inner pipe is centered, um, you know that's that's something we could we could potentially rig up in the yard and uh, and do some testing to evaluate capability we've done uh, we've done some projects with uh, smaller diameter again natural gas uh, unpickable laterals that are that are smaller in diameter you know six eight ten twelve which have actually had uh, a product called flex steel pulled through the pipe so the the where this is this is a, an example where you end up with kind of a, a pipe and pipe scenario and the flex steel, um, the flex steel is pulled through because the laterals are, are, are let's say, not used as uh, as extensively as they were before. They're not very high pressure. Flex steel has been pulled through as uh, as an alternative to to potentially remediate areas of significant corrosion, you know, on a on a temporary or long term basis. And uh, we've done caliper inspections of uh, of flex steel, which is a which, which again is a pipe and pipe type of scenario to, to, to check the integrity of the connections and, and check the integrity of the, the geometry of the flex steel. Fantastic. I can see a question here that says, how do you inspect lines with low pressure gas? Yeah, so our, our fleet in general, so our, our conventional ILI fleet was really designed with, with gas in mind. Um, and inspecting in gas in general, the smaller the diameter, um, the more difficult it becomes to inspect at, uh, at lower pressure. So inspecting in, in low pressure gas is all about reducing drag. Um, and drag, the drag comes from two main sources on a magnetic tool. It comes from the magnetics and it comes from the polyurethane, the cups, which uh, actually drive or in some cases support the tools. Um, so our, our, our base design uh, for all our smaller tools, it, we use a sled-based magnetizer. So it's a, a magnetizer that um, we've optimized to reduce friction. We've also eliminated all unnecessary cups on our tools. So we don't use cups to support uh, the vessels on the tool. So an MFL tool, 
uh, you know, can consist of several vessels, a, a drive unit, a magnetizer, caliper, batteries, IMU, uh, electronics, the smaller the tool, the, sometimes the more vessels it has. And uh, rather than having those vessels supported with cups, we use wheels to support those vessels. So a combination of the sled-based magnetizer, ride support wheels, um, you know, reduces reduces friction from the, from the outset. Uh, we have in the last uh, year and a half, two years now, we have been working on enhancing our low pressure capability even further. So from four inch to 12 inch tools, uh, we've optimized our, our tow module where, where the polyurethane is even further. And uh, we're, we're, we're kind of in a, in a, you know, doing field trials and, and commercializing that now, but we've seen reductions from you know, already already fairly low pressure scenarios. We've seen uh, the ability to to reduce line pressure by 25 up to 40 percent uh, in some situations. Thank you so much. We've got some excellent questions coming through today. Um, this has been brilliant. Um, another one for you. How far can you inspect with a blowout or with a pullback tether? Um, it's heavily dependent on the number of the bends in the line, the wall thicknesses, debris, um, not everyone is is uh, is the same. Um, we usually, or we always work with the operators to just, you know, if we're gonna do a bell hole, you design, you, you know, take access points that are above ground that are easy access. And if you're gonna cut the pipe and do a bell hole, then it's not always right in the middle. Sometimes depending on bends, it'll be maybe closer to one end than the other. Um, this 16 inch one we just did a couple weeks ago, we, the one direction was 80 meters and the other direction was about two kilometers. And it just made sense based on bends and access and an easy place for the client that it's not, not close to the middle. So we've, I think the, the longest one we've done so far is about six kilometers with a single access point, but that varies, you know on on a case by case basis sure fantastic i've got pablo balanos here from chevron asking can you use this technology on branched pipes and pipes where there are short radius elbows yeah generally speaking um the 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 tools the solution set that we have today um will not clear a short radius elbow so a 1d bend uh, gen generally speaking we, we can't get through them generally speaking we we work around them and and find you know midline cut points or or, or something adjacent to the bends to uh, um you know that capture the data the question around the the branch connections no again uh, our existing technology will not uh inspect around a t-piece so we can't we can't send the pipe in from a branch and, and have it turn around the t-piece and, and come back mm -hmm. you know okay. that that being said that being said pablo we we would um we'd, we'd be happy to to look at, at whatever particular challenges you have and and see if there's something that we can do to to help you I think probably time for maybe one, maybe two questions to go. Um, I've got a comment here. It says the HDD pre-pull and post-pull is an interesting concept. Do you often find things on the pre-pull inspection or on the post-pull? Yeah, it, it, it is interesting. And, and the majority of the lines come back clean. So in, in the majority of cases, we don't find anything. Um, but it does happen from time to time that we do see minor indications on the pre-pull. And, you know, when the pipe is up on stands and before it's, you know, a hundred feet under a river or, or under a roadway or, or what have you, it's, it's much, much easier to deal with anything that the tool picks up at that time. And uh, so, so we have found things generally, you know, it's, it's very minor uh, milling type defects or, or maybe some slight irregularity in a girth weld. But uh, when, again, when the pipe is above ground, you, you really have a, a, a low cost, easy way to, uh, to verify what it is that you're dealing with and potentially cut it out or even cut it out before, before the bore. Um, we have seen cases uh, where you know, minor indications are detected post-bore. 
and that was really the driver to this service. So we'd done, you know, done inspections of uh, of uh, an HDD bore after after the pipe is, you know, under the river or under the road. We found something minor, and then and then you get into very it, it, difficult discussions to try and figure out, uh, you know, is that is that damage that occurred as a result of the bore, or is that just just some minor, you know. Um, uh, imperfection that was there at, at manufacturing. So really, it, it, it's really about uh, eliminating uncertainty and, uh, and and getting an accurate baseline of the bore, um, you know, before and after it's done. Fantastic. I think that's all we have time for today. I want to say thanks to you both, Mike and Jay, for such a great presentation and for taking part in the Q&A. We have some great sessions, great questions. I think you'll agree. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much for uh, for everybody for for attending. And it uh, it always is the the interaction back and forth. So just ask us for a question. Ask us if we can be done because if you don't ask, then we'll never know. Absolutely. So if we didn't get to your question today, and uh, it will be passed on to the Mistress team, and they will get back to you. Um, everyone who registered for today's event will be sent a full recording of the session soon. Uh, if you're not already receiving a copy of World Pipelines, or if you'd like to get access to the digital version, please do sign up for free at worldpipelines.com. And if you're interested in pipeline operations and maintenance, I would love to invite you to our next online event, which is Optech 2021. It's happening on the 20th of October, and you can sign up for free at our website. So thank you once again, everyone, and goodbye. <laughs>